Welcome back to another episode of RVing to Alaska. In today's video, we revisit the month of February 2022, where Gary builds out cabinetry for his workshop. We discuss what happens when a moose is struck and killed by a vehicle and a program that helps feed Alaskan families. We then attend our first iron dog snow machine start out in the swamps out behind our house and we try to get out of a couple sticky situations, or should I say icy situations around our property. We wanna thank you for watching and leaving us such wonderful comments in our attempt to get caught up with our videos. We really do appreciate them. Thank you for watching. If you are new to our channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you are updated whenever our next adventure is released. Let's get to the video. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I'm looking out over the mountains here from our living room. We've got low clouds, but just perfect to frame out the mountains. We're standing here in our living room. This is a project we finished a week or so ago. We got our wood stove in and some of our stone. But uh, next step is paint. We're going to be choosing our paint colors here this week. And uh, they'll come into the walls, then start on the flooring and trim. What do you think, Soph? Hmm? What do you think? Yeah, she says, don't film me. Hey. Well, it's a cobalt kind of day today. And what I mean by that is, look at all the cabinetry we got. Oh my gosh. Shop cabinets right here. Um, gonna be assembling this stuff, putting it together, or and then arranging it inside my workshop. And uh, yeah, that's what we got going on. All right, so we got quite a few cabinets here. I've got uh, like two of these big tall cabinets. I actually have three of these wall cabinets. I want four, but only got, they only have three. And then I got four of these base cabinets here. So we're gonna kind of set up something similar to this right here, over here in the workshop on this wall. Uh, as you can see in here, we got a big wall. It's like 20 some feet. I've got plumbing there for a sink. So we're gonna get a base, a regular sink base cabinet and put a, my work, shop sink in there and then we'll do the whole cabinet setup and in the corner where the uh in for heat stuff is i'm going to build a, another workbench on top of that so i'll have a workbench in the corner extending uh, underneath the windows a little ways so uh we're just trying to get this stuff set up so we can get some of our trailers unloaded so i can get some of my tools so i can do other stuff um, it's been difficult not having all my stuff here with me so this is the first step. So this is our living quarters currently in the RV shop. As you can tell, we've made ourselves at home. We've gone ahead and purchased a shop couch. And uh, this is basically where we live. We basically only eat and uh, or cook and sleep in the RV. Rest of the days are spent outside, pardon the mess. But one thing we did buy is some shelving units. And once we get everything situated, we are gonna move that over into the toy shed uh, and use that for all our snow machining gear, helmets, uh, clothing, and other uh, storage solutions. It's just wide enough to work in this space. Just making stuff up as I go. I mean, why? Why do you make it up as you go? No sense in doing it the right way. What are instructions for? After getting all the cabinets assembled, it was time to head back to Home Depot 
and grab some prefabricated cabinets and a countertop for the workshop sink area so we could complete the space. I must say Gary did an amazing job. He's always wanted a workshop and I can't think of a better one to suit his needs and wants. Hi everyone, I just wanted to break into this video real quick and give you a warning. The next few minutes are going to cover a topic of if a car hits a moose and kills it. And I just want to give you a heads up in case this kind of content you don't enjoy. You'll just want to skip forward a couple of minutes. Thank you. As you can tell by now with many of our videos, moose are a common sighting here in Alaska. They outnumber humans by far in population and unfortunately with that many moose are killed on Alaskan roadways. When the snow is deep they tend to stick to the roads, trails, and driveways as it is easier for them to maneuver around than tromping through the deep snow. Therefore with that unfortunately vehicle strikes happen especially along our highways. But the state of Alaska has an amazing program where the viable meat is not wasted and provides to both charities and families who are signed up for the Moose Roadkill program. The following is our story. Late one evening in the middle of February, our friends got a phone call from the state troopers letting her know that a moose was involved in a vehicle accident just down the highway from our houses and that she was next on the state's moose roadkill list. With this news, we gathered our gear and headed out to the accident site. When we arrived, we found an approximately three-year-old bull who had been dispatched by the state trooper to end its suffering. We spent the next five hours getting it off the side of the highway, getting it back to their house, and dressing it and getting it hung up to prepare for harvesting of the viable meat. In all, we were able to save most of the meat except for one hind quarter and a rib cage, as that is where it took the hit from the vehicle. Two days later, we came back together as a group and helped process the meat into bulk burger, sausage, and meat sticks. In all, this moose provided over 200 pounds of meat and filled the freezers of our two families. Moose is a very common staple in a local Alaskan's diet. We can't thank our friends enough for letting us help out in this very strenuous process. We are now signed up on the moose roadkill list ourselves. Although it is sad that one of our furry friends who regularly visits our property met a tragic end, his life will not be wasted and will bring happiness to our bellies. I kind of love the prime rib roast. Here we go. Garlic, thyme, rosemary, Dijon mustard, salt and pepper, slathered on the outside of the uh, prime rib roast. They went through a 24 hour plus a couple hour uh, dry brine in the refrigerator. Dry brine is just uh, pour salt all over the whole roast. 24 hours uncovered. Bye bye, see you move in. Beef is what for dinner. Moose was last night, beef tonight. Mm. Hi! Big Blue's just hanging out down here for a little bit. Maybe a lifeline attached. I don't know what's going on. I pulled out the Ranger. The Ranger got stuck down here. Pulled out the Ranger. And now that I'm pulling out the Ranger, the back tires of the truck slid down that way. That way, on this little icy stuff. You want to explain why you're back here plowing? Well, it snowed, so I have to plow. This, this is the backyard. Yeah. Well, the house is not done yet, so we keep the perimeter of the house plowed, so the contractors can come and work around the perimeter of the house. And what's happening this week or next? The contractors coming in to work around the house. Exciting. Maybe. 
Yes! Woohoo! Okay, get the ranger. Oh, lordy. So, I want you to just pull the winch in. Hopefully my one GoPro battery holds up, but if not, I got my cell phone to take footage. But we are going on a snow machine ride to go watch the Iron Dog competition. The pro class uh, start is today. So we're gonna take a ride out behind our house in the swamps down to Big Lake and watch them go by as they make their way to Nome, Alaska. It's a 2,600 mile snow machine race and uh, it's a big one here. So super excited about getting out and seeing what it's all about. After our last snow machine trip up to our friend's cabin, we went on a search for a machine to tide us over for the rest of the season while we waited for our snow checked Polaris snow machines to arrive. We happened to find a ski -Doo Expedition 600 Ace two-passenger machine on Facebook Marketplace for a pretty good deal. So we went ahead and purchased it, and now we have a third sled available in case one of ours breaks down or if we have guests who would like to go riding with us. All right, we are where we are going to watch the race go by. We're on the rail bed at one of the bridges and uh, they're gonna come down the trail right here and on their way to Nome. Wow, they're gonna drop the door yet. He's gonna buzz me. Yeah. It's probably the troopers. Oh, stay down, stay down. <laughs> Moon him. Nice. Moon him. <laughs> the leaders. Okay, here comes the second team. You can hear them. Oh, there they come. So 
So during the Iron Dog here, they uh, they have a staggered start. So they start the sleds every two minutes apart. So they're so the teams aren't backed up on each other. Um, we've already had seen one team pass the other pass team. So like I think it was team number five passed team number four. So they came through first. Um, that gives them a chance to give them space on the on the trail. So we're not all all uh, going step in places. Well, that concludes our first ever Iron Dog. It was a lot of fun, and I've heard they should be back in about a week. So, uh, yeah, something to check out online, follow along, and uh, we'll do it again next year. All right, it's time to head back to the house and enjoy the rest of our Saturday. So our goal today is to unbury this trailer and we want to move it over to the house with our truck so we can get some items out of it. The workshop is ready to be um, filled with tools and I would like some of our furniture to uh, help pick with color decor. So that's today's goal. Crossing fingers, we get it out. So this snowstorm, the weather this winter has been crazy. Okay, moment of truth. It's just a sheet of ice. The ice underneath in the driveway. Yeah. Oh, huh? Yeah, you need gravel or cat litter or something. Sand, two bags. Oh, let's see what that does for us. Ace's place. That wasn't Ace, that was three bears. Oh, you went to the grocery store. Well, they just didn't have anything. Wow. Yeah, so three bears it is. Three bears for the win. Uh -huh. they, they seem, for some reason, they seem to. Pull off winds quite a bit. Well, they've got some good backing. Yeah, Costco. <laughs> All right, we got a bag of sand. Put it underneath the tires a little bit. Maybe that'll give us some traction. I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, we got a neighbor, Mike. Uh, he might be able to give me a yank. A little bit more pull. So we'll see what happens. It's just, it's just the ice is getting to us, and uh, maybe the snow on top of the ice and the sand will help get us out. Right. We'll see what happens. Not. <laughs> I'm a betting woman. This isn't gonna work. <laughs> Nope. Uh, 
I was a betting woman and I won! Oh, I'm back here! <laughs> Mike to the rescue! The bungee! The bungee! Yep, the Ford is pulling the Dodge. Here we go. Woo she is out of hibernation. Matt's recovery rope? Matt's recovery rope. Yep. <laughs> it so oh, yeah. Woohoo! It's going to be Christmas all over again! <laughs> Hi, Spirit! What are you doing? Well, as you can see, we did get our trailer over to the shop and we are in the midst of a pretty good snowstorm. So this is gonna get interesting. I might admit that I've already fallen once and uh, Gary just about biffed it. So uh, it's pretty treacherous at the moment, but we're gonna start offloading our stuff. It's been packed since last winter so it's kind of exciting to at least have access to some of our belongings so, long distance moves they're never easy Thank you again for watching and being patient with our videos. Be sure to give us a like and comment below to keep the algorithm and the YouTube gods happy. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, so you will be notified when our next video comes out. And I'll try and get another one out soon. Until next time, safe travels.